Welcome to WXTV, your source for energy efficiency and home performance. Today's episode will demonstrate several options for exterior containment on a home with lead-based paint. In complying with EPA's renovation, repair, and painting rule, and the Department of Energy's LSW rule, we need to contain the dust that we create on the job site. We're inside the WXTV studios, but we'll assume that we're outside a pre-78 home that has tested positive for lead. For the purposes of these demonstrations, we'll use a hypothetical job scenario where we'll be needing to remove strakes of siding in order to gain access to the sidewalls for insulation. Under the RRP rule, if we're disturbing or removing 20 square feet of material or more, we're required to put up some form of containment. Now, under the Department of Energy's LSW rule, we're always required to put up containment regardless of that size. For our first containment, we'll show you the bare minimum under both rules, which is laying out 10 feet of plastic in all directions. We can get by with the bare minimum in this case based on the parameters of the job. And those parameters include the presence of inclement weather, including rain, snow, sleet, or especially wind, the proximity of the job to another property line. If we can't get 10 feet out with our plastic, then we need to do something else. The type of job that we're doing, in this case, we're removing siding, and that'll include the types of tools that we're gonna use to accomplish that task. And finally, the duration of the job. How long will this setup be in place? So let's lay out some plastic. So our job site ends at this edge here. We're gonna extend our plastic 10 feet in this direction, 10 feet out in this direction, and 10 feet from the other end of our job site down there. I'm gonna pull this plastic out and I'm just gonna staple it below this transition strip here. You'll notice that it's sealed with the siding up above it so we don't have to worry about dust and debris getting down behind there. And that way we can hide the staples underneath. Okay, so we'll take a couple of these boxes here and just make a curb along our edge just to give us a little height so we aren't kicking debris off the edge of the plastic and also so we can tuck the plastic underneath them and hold it down in the wind. So there you have it. We've got 10 feet of plastic out in all directions. We've got a curb along our edge to keep some of that debris from moving off our plastic. And if we were really dealing with lead-based paint, we'd be in compliance for removing those strakes of siding all the way down. For our second containment, we're going to demonstrate the use of a trough with this frame that we have built under the window here. Troughs are great. They can be scalable in size from small to very large. You can make them out of materials that you have around and they are excellent for windy conditions when you wanna have a little bit of vertical containment to keep the dust from blowing around on your job site. We made this frame out of PVC and it has a few features worth noting. The first one is having the ability to adjust your height so you can get up to right underneath whatever your work area is going to be. These cross members here determine your length of your work area and uh, we can just swap these out for whatever length we want. Right here we have it set up about perfectly for this window and we also have an adjustable distance from the wall here. Um, I like to keep mine pretty close just on this closest pin here. Makes it a little easier to work. Let's roll out some plastic and make sure you leave enough plastic here for the sides coming up.
So there it is, we have a trough. And uh, if you have a little bit of problems with the wind blowing things around, you can just take some construction debris and drop it down into the bottom of there and it should hold it down nicely. For our third containment, we're going to build a lean-to. Now this gets into vertical containment, which is required if you can't get 10 feet of plastic out on your job site because of an obstruction or perhaps hitting another property line. These are also great for inclement weather like rain, snow, and especially wind. So let's measure out our work site so we have an idea of how much plastic to cut. I'm gonna have Jared come in here and help me. So we're right around 15 feet. So we can get by with two sheets of plastic. We're just using 10 foot wide rolls so I know exactly how wide they are and I can gauge everything based on that. All right, we'll take one more measurement here. I wanna get a, a length on this. And it looks like a little over 11 feet, so I'll cut these at 12. Looks like given the measurements of our work area here, it's probably gonna be best to use our 10 foot wide sheets and roll those down 12 feet in length and then cut, uh, cut a couple of triangles for the ends there. Now let's cut a 10 foot square so we can have our corner pieces. Good help these days. Now we'll go ahead and set up our ends.
looks like we're gonna need a door. And I think for this one, we're gonna use a zipper door. About the only trick to this is to make sure that you have the zipper pull at the bottom so that your uh, height challenged workers can reach it. Well, so there you have it. Uh, we got a pretty good lean-to. Let's step out and talk about a few of the features. So really the only thing to mention here is the direction of the wind. Since we overlapped our plastic vertically, we wanted to make sure that the wind came across it. It wouldn't fill it up like a sail. So our prevailing wind is from that direction. So our top sheet comes over from there. And then of course, we made sure that we put our zipper door or whatever doorway you're making on the leeward side of your containment. For our fourth containment, we're going to build a two by four framed wall tent. Now you can already see it makes great use out of materials you have laying around on your job site. And for this vertical, we've used a zip rod, though you could certainly use a two by four here as well. This is another example of a vertical containment. Being square, it's easier to build than the lean-to, and it's even stronger in high winds. These collapsible brackets are pretty nice if you wanna use them on other jobs. So I think we'll wrap this one by taking a four foot wide sheet and running it up and over to make our tops and sides. Then we'll take a 10 foot wide sheet and run it the length of this to make our face.
Well, there you have it. We've shown you several examples of exterior containment, but keep in mind, each one of these is custom to the job you're working on. You may have an overhanging eave, and you're able to just use zip rods and some plastic to create a wall. Or you may have to build scaffolding and run plastic around that. Ultimately, it's your job to contain the dust that you create. And thanks for watching.